This episode introduces the birth and spread of Y-DNA haplogroup Q, which makes up the core patrilineal lineages of Native Americans. Y-DNA haplogroup Q or QM242 is of paternal descent, sharing immediate direct ancestry with haplogroup R. Haplogroup Q, along with R, is the youngest lineage. It is estimated that it was first formed about 31,400 years ago. The screen shows the ages of Y-DNA haplogroups in order. It is the main paternal lineage that makes up Native Americans. This video introduces the birth and spread of this haplogroup. The map shows that the Y-chromosome haplogroup Q is now predominantly found among Native Americans and several Central Asia and Northern Siberia peoples. In particular, Ket people who seem to live mainly in the middle and lower reaches of the Yenisei River in Central Siberia. And males of South American Aborigines belong to this haplogroup at a high rate of more than 90%. 77.2% of Native Americans are in this haplogroup. Among the Central Asian Turkmen tribes, 73% of Yomut males belong to this group. You can check the high percentage of shortages through maps and charts. In Europe, it is observed with low frequency only in some regions. Haplogroup Q is thought to have originated in Central Asia or North Asia near Lake Baikal around the time of the last glacial maximum. To help understand the origin and spread of Q, let's take a brief look at the migration process through Y-DNA tracing of modern humans from Africa. Please know that the migration path of the Y-chromosome Adams descendants is not the evolutionary process of modern humans nor is it talking about the time of birth of modern humans. It is to discover how some modern humans living in Africa came out of this place and spread to Eurasia through paternal chromosome tracing. For better understanding, I will explain it as a mega haplogroup tree. Among modern humans who lived in Africa, the out-of-African populations were probably very few in the paternal haplogroups D1 and CF. A, B, E, and D2 remained in Africa. E1B1B, a sub-blanche of E, began to enter Europe during the Chalcolithic Age. Please look at the linked video for the migration process of E1B1B. The first groups to enter Europe were members of haplogroup C1. The C1 group shared a habitat with Neanderthals in Europe. According to the reconstructions by the BBC and scientists, their appearance is a mix of modern Africans and Asians. Their skin color was much darker than that of modern Europeans. Some of the haplogroup C2 and C1 migrated to Asia. For information on this, see Neanderthals and the first European and migration paths of haplogroup C linked at the top right. The common ancestor of most modern Eurasians is F. F is Eurasian Y chromosome Adam. Patrilineal lineage from F to G, H, I, J, K. These groups comprise ancient European, West Asian, and South Asian peoples. K is the common ancestor of N, O, Q, and R. N can be found much in Northern Europe, Siberia, and O currently constitutes East Asians. Q is the paternal genetic type that makes up Native Americans. R is the paternal haplogroup that now makes up the majority of Europeans. KM9 formed about 47,200 years ago and likely originated from Western and Southern Asia. It is more likely that it was in South Asia, near Pakistan. A direct descendant, K2M526, formed 45,400 years ago in Central or South Asia, and they diverge into two groups. These are K2A and K2B. The UST Asian man who lived in West Siberia in 45,000 was identified as K2AM2308. Also, the man excavated from Oase Cave in Romania was K2A. Genomes derived from Neanderthals were detected in 6-9% of them. K2AM2308 is an ancestor of haplogroup NM231, which is highly frequent in Yakult, Nenet, Finnish, Baltic, and Sami peoples. It is also the common ancestor of OM175, which constitutes East Asians such as China, Korea, and Japan. Ancestors in haplogroup and first migrated to Asia. Then, through Asia and northern Siberia, they went to northern Europe. K2BP331 diverges into K1B1 and K2B2P295. 
K2B2P295 is also known as P. QM242 and RM207 separate from P1M45, a direct descendant of P. Five videos have been produced and uploaded to the channel for the detailed diffusion path of RM207. The spread of R1A and R1B is described in European archaeological cultures. The common ancestor of Q and R, P1M45, is believed to have first appeared in Siberia around Lake Baikal 31,700 years ago. It is likely that Q and R also diverged near P1. From now on, let's look at the diffusion process of QM242. Y-DNA haplogroups P1, Q, and R are believed to have originated in the western region of Lake Baikal. In archaeogenetics, people who lived in this area during the Paleolithic are called Ancient North Eurasians, also commonly referred to as ANE for short. ANE ancestry is closely related to the Maltaburet culture. Today, more than half of the world's population inherited between 5 and 40 percent of their genome from an ANE ancestor. The epicenter of the spread of haplogroup Q is also here. According to the 2022 International Society of Genetic Genealogy criteria, this paternal lineage has two subclades. These are Q1L472 and Q2L275. The subclades appear to have diverged 28,700 years ago. The oldest YDNAQ sample from the ancient site is from a man excavated at the Afantova Gora site on the banks of the NSA River, near the city of Krasnoyarsk, Russia. The man who lived there around 15,000 BCE has been identified as Q1A1. The oldest ancient sample in the Americas is the Anzic one belonging to the Clovis culture in western Montana, USA, identified as Q1BZ780. The date is 10,726 BCE. Q1BM902 has also been identified in the remains of an ancient man who lived in Chile around 10400 BCE. Some of the ANE people migrated to the Americas. A paper published in BMC Biology in January 2019 describes the migration of YDNAQ and related three cases. In the paper, people belonging to haplogroup Q1, who had migrated to the Chukchi region, came to the Americas along the coastal route before 16,000. Between 14,500 and 15,500 years ago, they moved south to the Americas along the internal route. It also tells us that people in Alaska before 5,000 did back migration to the Chukchi Peninsula. It is also said that they migrated to Greenland through the Arctic route around this time. This migration process is detailed through a map. First, let's look at the migration process before 16,000. The haplogroup Q migration probably started during the last glacial maximum. And the LGM began 33,000 years ago and lasted until 20,000 years ago. Around the Altai Mountains at this time were the tundra climate and the subarctic climate to the north and south. They may have lived here hunting caribou and mammoths. As temperatures rose toward the end of the LGM, mammoths and caribou would have migrated north, following them to pursue these prey. The populations that migrated to the Americas during this period were subclades of Q1BL56. L54 is a direct branch of Q1BL56, and M1107 belonging to this branch has moved eastward. A branch of M1107, M930, left for Alaska. M930 formed 15,400 years ago. There were substantial ice sheets in Siberia and North America. And at this time, the Bering Sea was land. This land area is called Beringia. Those belonging to M3, a direct subclade of M930, and Z780, another direct subclade of M1107, likely stayed in Beringia for some time. Jeffrey Bond, studying the geology of Ice Age deposits, created a new map of Beringia in 2008. This is Beringia 18,000 years ago. I composited this map with Google Earth in the video. Beringia was a relatively cold and dry place with little tree cover but it was still speckled with rivers and streams. Bond's map shows that it likely had several large lakes. Grasslands, shrubs, and tundra-like conditions would have prevailed in many places, Bond said. These environments helped megafauna thrive, including the woolly mammoth, Beringian lion, short-faced bear, grizzly bear, muskox, steppe bison, the American scimitar cat, caribou, Yukon horse, saiga antelope, gray wolf, giant beaver, according to the Yukon Beringia Interpretive Center. 
M3 and Z780 ancestors probably lived and hunted them here. Until now, the dominant hypothesis among archaeologists was that the earliest human presence in the Americas was about 15,000 years ago. This is because the North American continent at the time of the LGM had the Laurentide and the Cordilleran ice sheet, which prevented human migration. About 20,000 years ago, these ice sheets may have reached their maximum size. The screen you see now is an ice sheet that existed on the North American continent 20,000 years ago. It was plotted on a map based on the results of simulations by scientists. Until 15,000 years ago, these ice sheets prevented human migration inland. Because of this, the hypothesis called Clovis I was supported. In this hypothesis, people related to the Clovis culture were thought to have been the first inhabitants of the Americas. Archaeological culture from 13,000 to 11,000 years ago near Clovis, New Mexico. Here, FGC 47595 belonging to the subclade of QZ780 was identified. It was thought that 14,500 years ago, when the weather warmed and the ice melted, an ice corridor formed between the two ice sheets, making it possible to move south through this area. However, much evidence has been found that people lived in the Americas before Clovis. In Monte Verde, Chile, tools used by people who lived at least 18,500 years ago have been unearthed. Idaho site shows humans were in North America 16,000 years ago. The site at Cooper's Ferry along the Salmon River is more evidence humans first traveled along the coast, not via an ice-free corridor. The Gulf site in Texas has yielded thousands of artifacts that could be 16,000 to 20,000 years old. Much evidence has recently been discovered that could overturn the Clovis first hypothesis. Some even claim that the Americas were inhabited 50,000 years ago. Many scholars question the dating of this claim. Currently, the claim that modern humans migrated to America 20,000 years ago, 5,000 years earlier than the previous theory of migration, is accepted in the archaeological community. They are presumed to have migrated through coastal rather than ice-free corridors. Beringia was already inhabited 20,000 years ago. The QZ780 and QM3 may also have been part of these groups. Since QZ780 formed about 15,400 before the present and QM3 formed about 14,900 before the present, they may not have migrated to the Americas 20,000 years ago. There may be other as yet undiscovered populations. In a paper published in BMC Biology, the authors estimate that men belonging to the subclade of YDNA haplogroup QZ280 of the Clovis culture migrated by the coastal route 16,000 years ago. M3 was thought to have moved south after the ice-free corridor was created. Between about 14,500 to 15,500 years ago, at 10,000 before the present, the Cordilleran ice sheet on the west coast of North America melts. By this time, Beringia has also disappeared into the sea. The Laurentide ice sheet is also about half melted, and on the west side of the sheet, melted glaciers create huge lakes. Its name is Lake Agassi. This lake is blocked, and the ice sheet's edge melts, causing vast fresh water to disappear into the Labrador Sea. This event blocks the circulation of the Gulf Stream of Mexico, and again cools the Earth to the temperature of the Ice Age for 1,000 years. Climatologists call this the Younger Dryas. It is an event that changed the map of human civilization. By 900 before the present, most glaciers will melt except for Nunavut in Canada and northeastern Quebec. Since then, people belonging to the paternal lineage Q have migrated to South America in large numbers. Almost all of the people who migrated belonged to M3, and some belonged to Z780. Let's look at the ancient DNA of haplogroup Q through a map. Let's go back to the YDNA haplogroup Q migration process. 
B-34 has derived from Q-1 BY-4303 in Alaska about 6,600 years ago. Some of the people from this group migrated back across the Bering Sea to Asia, and others migrated to the eastern United States. It is estimated that these migrations took place some 5,000 years ago. The Native Americans described so far belonged to Q-1B or M-346. Some of the people in Q-1A, F-1096 also migrate to America. That period was about 5,000 years ago. Q-1A F-1096 has first formed somewhere west of Lake Baikal 26,100 years ago. It diverges into Q1A1 F746 and Q1A2 M25 between about 23,800 and 20,600 years ago. Some of the people on F746 make the long journey to Alaska. They arrived in Greenland via Alaska about 4,000 years ago. B140, a subplate of F746, is believed to have formed here. Some of the F746 subclades are destined for East Asia. This is the M120. A branch of Q1A2, L713, also headed for the eastern end of Siberia around the same time and sailed to the Aleutian Islands. So far, we have schematically explained how Native American YDNA haplogroup Q migrated from Asia. The next video will introduce the process of spreading YDNA Q to Asia and Europe. Please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on notifications.